Okay, welcome back. Uh, so last time we, uh, so let me just zoom around. So last time uh, we stated the what the EXP3 algorithm was, right? So we stated it and outlined it. Uh, then we talked about what this theorem was on the upper bound on regret. Uh, then we went through this proof uh, of all this sort of nasty notation of fudging terms and finding good inequalities. So uh, at the end of last video, uh, we got to here. So we got to uh, capital W of t plus 1 divided by capital W of t is less than or equal to all this stuff. So what we're going to do now uh, is we're going to take the logarithms of both sides. right? So log of both sides. Um, and we're actually going to uh, use an extra trick. right? So this trick here is that uh, 1 plus a is less than or equal to e to the a when a is uh, greater than 1. So this is whatever a's we're concerned with. Uh, and so here this is going to be our a and so we'll be able to get rid of this log and get rid of this one without changing the rest of the terms right so uh, this is just going to be uh, less than or equal to uh, gamma over k divided by 1 minus gamma x i sub t of t plus e minus 2 uh, gamma over k squared divided by 1 minus gamma times the sum i goes from 1 to k of x i hat of t Okay, fine. And then on the other side, we're going to split this up as a difference, right? So this is going to be the log of wt plus 1 minus the log of wt. Okay, cool. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a sum over both sides of this over t. So this is going to be a sum where t is going from round 1 to round capital T. Remember, this capital T was our stopping time. Uh, and then on the left hand side, this is going to be a telescoping sum. So telescoping sum, which means that. Uh, when we take the sum, it's going to delete all of the terms except the very first term and the very last term, right? So this is going to give us the log of w capital T plus 1 minus the log of capital W1. Uh, it's going to be less than or equal to this sum over t's, right? So, so, so remember that this, uh, this term right here was the gain of the exp3 algorithm on round t. So whichever action it took, this was how much it made from that uh, from that action. And we're taking a sum over all of t. So this is exactly going to be uh, the gain of uh, our exp3 algorithm from rounds 1 to t. Okay, And then we're just going to leave the rest of this stuff sort of unexpanded. right? So this is going to be gamma over k over 1 minus gamma plus e minus 2 gamma over k squared divide by 1 minus gamma, and then we're going to have this double sum uh, first over t and then over i of x i hat of t. Okay, fine. So uh, now we can actually go ahead and we can work on the left hand side of this separately. But we're going to do something sort of tricky. What we're going to do is we're going to come up with a sum that holds for any fixed action j, right? So this part that we're doing now is for any fixed action j, we're going to get this inequality, right? So so the natural log of w capital T plus 1 minus the natural log of w1, right? This is going to be greater than or equal to, right? So here we're going to squeeze this thing in between two different uh, uh, quantities. So this is going to be greater than or equal to, uh, so, so this thing was actually just equal to k, right? Remember because w capital W1 is the sum of the weights in round one, and in round one we initialize all the weights to be one. So this is just k. And then this guy here is going to be, uh, so so we'll write out what it is and see why. So this is going to be uh, gamma over k times the sum of x uh, x j hat of t, where t goes from one to capital T. Okay, so this is minus log k. Okay, so this is the quantity, and to see why this is true, we're just going to look at this wt plus 1, right? So capital wt plus 1, this was, uh, 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 oh, sorry, okay, so, so, so what we're really doing here is we're saying that capital w of capital t plus 1, this is greater than or equal to uh, little w of j on round t plus 1. So what's happening here is we're saying that the sum of all the weights is at least one of the weights, right? So obviously, um, and this w j of t plus one, we can use the weight update rule to expand this into 
uh, something else, right? So this using the weight update rule, this is W J T plus one. This is going to be W J of T times E to the gamma over K X J of uh, so this is X J of capital T hat, right? Uh, and then we can actually go ahead and keep doing this, right? So keep unraveling this thing. We're going to get uh, a bunch of products of exponentials, which looks like product of e to the gamma over k, x j hat of t, uh, where t is going from 1 to capital T, right? And since we're taking a log of this expression, right, then this is going to uh, turn into, okay, well, I mean, before we take the log, this product of exponentials, this is just e to the sum of all of these powers, right? So this is gamma over k of x j hat of t, where t goes from 1 to capital T, and then taking logs gets rid of the e, and exactly this term is what's left over up here. Okay, fine. So that was a little fast, but I hope you guys followed. Um, uh, so next what we're going to do is uh, we're going to sort of write this back down here. So, uh, uh, right, okay, fine. So, so we have this thing which is holding for any fixed j, right? So for any fixed j, uh, we have uh, that uh, gamma over k times the sum of the xj hat of t, t going from 1 to t, uh, minus log k, uh, so this is in parentheses right here, is, is less than or equal to gamma over k, uh, let me write that over here, gamma over k divided by 1 minus gamma of uh, the gain of the exp3 algorithm up to time t plus this, okay, so this big fat term, e minus 2 gamma over k squared over 1 minus gamma times the sum, uh, the double sum, first over t, then over i of xi hat of t. Okay, fine. So, uh, so we've gotten here, uh, and we want to simplify this expression. So we'll notice a couple of things. Well, first of all, uh, uh, we want to work with expectations, right? So this guy is a random variable, and so we're going to want to take its expectation eventually. And this guy here, if we take its expectation, we will get the sum over just the xj of t's, right? Without the hat, because that's what we said at the beginning. Uh, in the first video, we said that if we take the expectation of xj hat, we just get the xj. So this is going to be the sum of all the payoffs of xj over all the rounds, and this is going to turn into, uh, eventually, this will turn into g max of t, right? So that's where we're going. Uh, but first, let's simplify this expression a little bit. So let's go ahead and uh, so we're going to multiply through by k over gamma. So it's going to put a factor of k over gamma here, and it's going to put it's going to get rid of this, and it's going to get rid of one of these terms. And then we're going to multiply through by one minus gamma. So it's going to get rid of uh, this term and this term, and we'll put parentheses right here. Okay, fine. So uh, now we can simplify this, and let's also simultaneously let's solve for gexp3. Okay, so uh, if we do all those steps, then we get uh, g exp3 of t is going to be greater than or equal to 1 minus gamma times uh, the sum over t of xj hat of t minus k log k over gamma. Uh, and then since we subtracted this from both sides, we get e minus 2, uh, sorry, so we get uh, e minus 2 gamma over k times this double sum. So double sum ti xi hat of t. Okay, fine. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to take expectations of both sides. So the rule we're using here, which we proved earlier, was that the expected value of xj uh, hat given the previous sequence of actions uh, is actually equal to xj of t. Okay, fine. So we proved that earlier. I'm not going to repeat the proof, but if we go ahead and we take uh, expectations of both sides, right? Expectation is linear, so it's going to factor through all this stuff until it gets just down to the random variables, which are the hats. Uh, so this is going to give us uh, the expected value of g exp3 of t 
is going to be greater than or equal to uh, so 1 minus gamma times the sum over t of the expected value of xj hat of t minus uh, okay so the expected value of k log k is just k log k uh, minus e minus 2 gamma over k times this sum over t and then over i of the expected value of xi hat of t. Uh, okay, xi hat of t. Okay, fine. So let's make some space. Uh, okay, great. So uh, now we're going to go ahead uh, and uh, reason about this, right? So we said that this was this inequality holds true for any j, right? So this is for any fixed j. And so we can go ahead and we can make this j be the best j, right? So this term here turns into g max of t, right? Because we're picking the best j that gives us the biggest g max. Fine. Uh, so then uh, let me actually move this whole thing sort of up and to the side. Okay, fine. So uh, what we have is we have uh, exp the, the expected gain of exp3 up to round t is going to be uh, greater than or equal to right uh, 1 minus gamma times uh, g max of t minus k log k over gamma minus uh, this this e minus 2 uh, uh, so e minus 2 gamma over k times this double sum first over t then over i of x i of t uh, expected value so so okay when we did the expected value the hat goes away and so this is just x i of t without the hat uh, okay fine let me make this a little bit prettier okay fine so uh, now we're going to do is we're going to reason about this term right so this term here if we go ahead and we switch the t and the i sums, right? We can switch these sums. Then we get the sum over i over the sum over t of x i of t, right? And this now, if i is fixed, this guy here is less than or equal to g max of t, right? Because we're picking some action. We don't know which action it is, but it's at most the best action, right? So we're taking the sum over i of g max. This is just k times g max of t. Right? Okay, so this k is going to cancel with this k right here, so we'll see that in a second. Uh, but now we're going to get uh, the expected value of g x p 3 of t is greater than or equal to 1 minus gamma. Okay, so one other thing that uh, the original guys who proved this did, but it's kind of weird, so they only distributed the 1 minus gamma here. Right? So if we leave the 1 minus gamma out from here, it only makes things smaller because if we leave it out, right, then we're going to be subtracting something which is bigger, so that makes this whole term smaller. Okay, fine. So uh, we have 1 minus gamma times g max of t minus k log k over gamma minus, okay, so we have e minus 2 times, okay, so gamma over k, but this cancels with the k, so this is just e minus 2 times gamma times g max of t, right? So this is starting to look very familiar. This is stuff from the statement of the theorem. Okay, so, so let's go ahead and simplify this. So distributing out this, this is g max of t minus gamma g max of t. Uh, uh, okay, so I'm just going to leave this undistributed. This is going to be minus k log k over gamma minus e minus 2 gamma g max of t. Okay, fine. And now I can subtract g max from both sides, right? So this is going to be expected value of the gain of exp3 minus g max is greater than or equal to. Uh, so um, I mean, so I will uh, factor this out, right? So if I factor out g max of t, then I get uh, g max of t, and then I have minus gamma minus e minus two gamma, right? So that's just uh, that's just going to be e minus 1 gamma. So let me factor out gamma from this, and this is just, uh, so let me do this in orange. This is just minus 1 minus e minus 2 times 1, right? So this is just uh, going to be what? Minus e uh, plus 1. 
Right? Okay, so minus e plus, no, minus e minus 1, right? And so, no, minus e plus 1, right? And so if I factor out the minus sign, okay, so let me factor out the minus sign, this is going to be uh, just e minus 1. Okay, fine, so <laughs> that was a pain in the butt. Um, but we can go ahead uh, and we can, okay, so let me just put back in the minus k log k over gamma. So now we're like pretty much almost done, uh, right? So now we just need to flip the inequality because we want an upper bound. So if we just flip the, so if we just multiply through by minus one on both sides, uh, so we get g max of t minus the expected value of exp3 of t uh, is going to be less than or equal to, so gamma uh, times uh, e minus 1 times g max of t minus k log k over gamma. Okay, so this is exactly the statement of the theorem, and now we're done. Whew, okay, I hope you all enjoyed it, um, and I guess I will see you guys next time.